So first of all, we have a very special session today and it's with Kim Shoesmith. She has the cloth shop in Melbourne and I've had the pleasure of going into that shop and it was just amazing. And I was there with Suzanne Degavir and Suzanne's on the call too and she's going to be commenting with Kim about her experience and, and the things that she has bought in the store. Kim is going to be the one that's going to be really explaining to us about the types of fabrics and what is suitable. Um, to add some context to what we're going to be covering, I just wanted to share with you, or just a reminder about the body types and the suitable fabrics that actually work for each body type. And then Kim can just ex expand on that for us. So the three main body types are, as you can see, the visible frame. I prefer to call it visible as opposed to skeletal. Um, I think it's a little kinder. And here we have a picture of Angelina Jolie, who's always worried everybody about just how fragile she looks. But with fabrics, she really needs something that's still got substance to it. Anything that's too floaty or fluidy is going to make her look even more fragile. Um, the cushion frame, and again, I prefer to call it cushion than fleshed. Or your um, frame is actually softened. Your silhouette is quite softened because it's the way your flesh is arranged on your bones. And this particular body shape needs more drape uh, in her fabric, something that's not going to be too, too structured, nothing too boxy or nothing too stiff. And of course, the muscular frame, you've got really well-defined muscles uh, on on over the bones and of course they're working out obviously or they're certainly moving their body and they need fabrics in that mid-range between uh, medium drape to medium taut. They don't want to be stitched up and tight or anything like that. The very very floaty drapey fabrics do look a bit strange on this body. Um, Lisa Curry Kenny was one of our swimmers and uh, she loved the very soft almost watery fabrics that she would would wear but with her muscular arms it there was it just looked weird it just didn't look right so there were, had to be ways for her to be able to express her uh, personality by still honoring that but having fabrics that actually work better for her so with no further ado I'm just going to unshare my screen right now to hand over to Kim and Suzanne Thanks, Evelyn. So everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Kim, who's sitting right next to me. Um, I've known Kim now for about five years, and it was via a mutual friend of ours, um, Estelle, who suggested that I should uh, start taking sewing classes and introduced me to Kim. And so off I popped down to the cloth shop, bought myself a sewing machine. And um, as they say in the classics, the rest is history. So <laughs> we've become very firm friends and um, I, I love that I can go in there. It's a, a source of creativity for me to go and make my own clothes. But as well as that, it's a great resource for me with clients that I can take them in there. There's uh, dressmakers on hand. Uh, I don't certainly do not make clothes for my clients, but I can advise on fabrics and I defer to Kim. I'll say, oh, if I'm looking for a blouse for this person, would this be a good fabric? And she'll say, oh, yes, but what about this? And so, you know, so it becomes a bit of an ideas factory. So that's why we've invited Kim to come on and have a chat to you um, because, yeah, we all need a Kim in our world. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. Um, lovely to meet you all. Um, I own the cloth shop in Ivanhoe. I started working there in the 80s when I was an embryo. Uh, I purchased the shop in 99 and we have transitioned from what we used to be back in the day. Everybody would be sewing their children's clothes. I think uh, fabric stores and dressmaking is now about fashion and personal expression. So we have morphed our, changed our business along the way, you know, become what is suitable for the home dressmaker now and what they're trying to achieve. And I think that's important. You have to, to move with your business, move it with the times and keep relevant. I love sewing. I love designing. I love shopping. Uh, and I really get great pleasure out of helping people achieve the garments that they're trying to achieve. Um, we keep a, keep a broad spectrum of fabrics um, from evening wear through day wear, linen, natural fibre, stretch fabric and offer 
uh, dressmaking classes also. Um, so we're quite diverse, quite diverse. My advice would be if you're taking a client down the road of having something made, don't start with your mother of the bride outfit. You know, if you've got a wedding coming up, perhaps do uh, some smaller garments first, a, a top perhaps, or, and then go to something that's similar to the design that you'd like to achieve in the end, have it made in a less expensive fabric, and make sure that you've got your client and the dressmaker on the same page. Um, you know, you want somebody that's going to work with you. You don't want someone who's going to overtake the project. Um, you know, you have to feel comfortable as a stylist. Your client has to feel comfortable because it's a very close relationship with the dressmaker. It's like your hairdresser. You, you know, you need to have an understanding of what you're trying to achieve in the end. Going back to, you know, your guide for fabrics, if you're going into a good fabric shop, most staff would have design and experience with garments. So, you, you know, if you're going into a, a good fabric shop, the staff there will certainly be able to help uh, with putting design and, and appropriate fabrics together. Okay. So girls, it's what's really important is that your dressmaker and your tailor, they're part of your team and you are the expert. You are in charge of that team and they're coming on board to help you to achieve the result. They're not there to take over and argue against you and put you down in front of your client. So you've got to make sure that the person that you go to respects you and your knowledge and what you are trying to achieve with your client. They don't try and take over the process and do what they want to do rather than what you and the client have decided. So I think that's really imperative as it, as it is with hairdressers. As Kim said, any person that's in your team, you they must respect you as the expert. We have some amazing people that we know at the cloth shop. Um, this is our friend Alfia, who's um, a Russian born designer who, there's nothing this woman can't do. She actually can make any garment into another garment. You'll be wearing a jacket in her presence and she'll say to you, take that off and put it on upside down. And you go, excuse me? And you put it on upside down and the collar becomes the hemline and it works. Well, that's one of her pieces. Um, you know, she does these really interesting. It's a one sleeve shirt. Which can, which can look beautiful over just a straight structured dress, but also looks great over a, a tee with a graphic print on the front of it. It's just, uh, I've got it in black, because, you know, I need to twin with Suzanne whenever I can. <laughs> um, I won't be having the hair colour, but I can do the shirt. Um, you know, I, every time I wear it, I get people looking at me who don't understand it, and I love that. I don't want you to understand me. I want you to have to have a long, hard think about it. So, but you know, she, this is one of her designs. She's um, actually just going into production with this pattern. And there's a lot of shitty patterns out there now. You don't have to stick to Buttrick and McCall's like you, you had to back in the day. If you don't have a dressmaker that's a pattern maker. You, I always, I still love Vogue patterns, but there's so many in, indie pattern brands now that have, are usually women um, that have come from the, the manufacturing industry here when there's no designing going on in Australia anymore. So their pattern making roles are irrelevant. Um, there's a group of women that started a company about 11 years ago called Stylark and they were in the industry in Melbourne and mm. they have got an, an indie pattern brand and their clothing is all very um, contemporary. You know, it's our age bracket. You know, they're not, they're not designing for 20 year olds. They're designing for women who want to keep their style Relevant, funky. Yeah, that's one of theirs. It's got floating pockets. Everything now can be hand washed. Digital printing doesn't bleed. You don't lose your colour. You have a forever garment. That's the other thing with dressmaking. You'll find they're the garments that stay in your wardrobe, like your classic pieces that you pay money for. You know, it's they're not turn turned over. If it's classic style and fabric that isn't going to date, they're in your wardrobe forever. And the other thing about your dressmaking is that you can get your balance of your looks completely right. You probably find when you're taking your clients out, you're finding things that fit, but maybe they're not quite the right length or you're having to go, 
up a few sizes to fit certain body parts in, then it makes it too big on the shoulder. You know, I'm a big believer in getting things altered. You know, if you're not a dressmaker, you don't want to start from scratch. Altering your garments is, I think it's key to getting, you're looking as good as you can. You know, I, I think it um, gives you, everyone says to my friend here how tall she is. And it's because you you will all know it, you know, the garments are fitted right, the balances are right, the lengths are right. So, you know, even if you've got someone who can do some alterations or you do a, you know, a small class yourself where you can alter your own things, you wouldn't be doing it for your clients, but um, even encourage them to do it. And jump in. Um, so uh, just a quick question there while we're talking about alterations. What are some of the things, so let's say, um, I'm not having something made from scratch. I've taken a client shopping. We've found, um, so I'll give you a real life example. I had this gorgeous client. She was looking for a dress for a special function and we found this beautiful kind of lace style dress, but she was very short from the waist to the shoulder. So it needed about that much and it was a sleeveless kind of just shift dress, slim, simple cut. And it needed, you know, probably that much taken out of the shoulder to bring it up and it would have worked the, the style allowed for it to you know be adjusted up and um, I had someone I wanted to take her to and she said no 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 I'll go and do my own so she took it to a seamstress or a dressmaker or an alterations place and they said no 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 that we just no that can't be done so she rang me and she said I've just paid all this money for this dress I'm going to take it back now I'm so unhappy I'm you know I can't go to my you know, event and so on so what sort of things are relatively easy alterations in general versus those things that you just go, oh, no, I wouldn't even bother with that. I'd have something made from scratch. Anything that's um, to do with your shoulder or your neckline is probably a little more challenging. If something's oversized and it needs to be tailored or fitted, that's an easy fix. Same with altering lengths of garments. Mm. Um, I don't think personally a shoulder lift is that difficult. Um, a lot of people running alteration places don't want to. That would that would be, to me, that's something you would take to a dressmaker that does alterations, not just a, a, a an alterations place that's hemming your jeans for you for twenty dollars. You know, I think, um, and because your your neckline is such a prominent, it has to be spot on, doesn't it? Your neck and shoulder line. It's the things that people are focused on first. Um, I. It goes back to me saying finding someone that you've got on hand to do these things for you, someone that you know has the skills to do that kind of work. Because to me, a shoulder lift is easy, especially if it didn't have sleeves in it. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of places don't want to do it and they'll either uh, quote you an exorbitant amount of money to put you off or just say no straight out. So, which is, you know, it's probably not, the right person, not the right match for the, the type of job you want it done. Um, I think going to fabric shops, um, you've got a few fabric shops in Sydney, you've got the fabric store in Sydney, you've got Tasudi. They would certainly have dressmakers that they know of that people, you know, fabric people are really happy to share their information with you. Um, I'm sure there'd be dressmakers on both of those stores books in Sydney that could help you out with dressmaking. Absolutely. Um, like us as well, if anyone's in Melbourne, which I don't think anyone is. Um, yeah, Helen is. Oh, Helen. Yeah, well, we're the same. We have local dressmakers and it, across a few suburbs in Melbourne that we can recommend you to that do dressmaking from scratch, but are also pattern makers. So they know those fundamental ways to to tailor garments and to, and to make a pattern from scratch. That's your other um, avenue as well. You, if you've got a dressmaker that's a pattern maker, and they're not local to you, they can have that pattern on, on file. And, you know, you just send the fabric to them, they make it to your specification and send it back again. Um, that takes a bit of skill, but there's certainly people out there that can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, it's just finding them. I had, a, I had a client, girls, a few years ago now, and she had one hip that was about this much shorter than the other one so when she was standing and she was quite uh she had a really big corporate job but she was going for job interviews and things when she had her suit on everything was at an angle because her hip was so i said right we've got to change this because 
it just looks when when you walk in the room, it, it's all wrong because everything's on the thing. So I said, what we're going to do is go and find an awesome dressmaker, someone that's going to do a twelve for you, the pants, a skirt, and a jacket, and then we're going to use that as the basis for getting all your clothes made. And she thought it was the most amazing thing ever because when she got those suits on a hanger, now the clothes were all like this, but when she put them on her body, they were all straight. Yeah. And it just changed her world doing that. So it's just, but it is, it's finding those experts and having those people as part of your toolbox. Mm, I find too that actually every client I have, there's going to be some sort of alteration required. Mostly the sleeves, maybe the hemline, even nipping it in the side. You know, if there's, if there's a straighter jacket and she's got a curvy body, I will still want to take it in at the side or at the side seam, like the back seam, or if she's got a sway back, of course, then the back seam needs to be taken in. A lot of women will consider that it's, it's something wrong with their bodies and, um, and not with the garment. But when you show them just how easy it is to just, nip it in to make it look like it was actually made for them, um, they're more likely to buy. So there was one client I had, she was really quite a small frame, but she had the most unusually plump arms. It was, it was really quite unusual, I'd never seen that before. And um, every time we got her into clothes that were, you know, if they had sleeves in them, if, if we got her into clothes that fitted her body, but the, the sleeves were always too tight. So it was a real problem for her so you know you've got to have that flexibility but there was one stylist who sent a client to me she said I, I can't work with her there's nothing I can do for her and the client came to me and I was actually appalled because there was everything that you could do for her now was the opportunity to be able to introduce her to a really good um, tailoress yeah mm. Mm. and that's vital because there's no point looking at fabrics if you haven't got that resource to get things made that's right you know, we can, you know it's uh that that is the key to it all is getting the skill of somebody to get things made uh, i don't sew from myself as much as i should i need to you know i've had every opportunity during iso land to up my sewing game but i've ended up doing jobs for other people instead so i just bought a red a beautiful red pantsuit i really wanted a red pantsuit i needed something a little bit funky to wear underneath it a little bit of indulgence you see we have to indulge <laughs> ourselves, to ourselves up don't we <laughs> keep their style relevant funky yeah that's one of theirs it's got floating pockets a simple design but they always put some sort of little twist to it that's not too out there because most people are are not going to go and to, uh, down the route of being too out there, but they do really amazing contemporary garments that are actually not complicated to get made or to make. This, this is another brand. I'll, I'll take Althea's pattern's about to be released. Um, I, I'll have them on my website, but she'll also have them on hers. Yeah. Um, this is collar. You can do so many different things with it. I'm a bit of a, I don't like things, even though I've got a pussy bow on today, too close up to my neck. I'm always hot. So the, the colour of that jacket can do a lot of different things. And then I wear mine upside down, girls, yeah. because look what happens when you put it on upside down. You put it on upside down yeah. and you can broach it or do whatever. And then at the back, it's hard to see, I've turned Dolly around. At the back, oh, that collar is now the most amazing peplum. It's beautiful. Love it. So that's so it's the same jacket, very, very but it's clever. just worn upside down, and it's asymmetric anyway. So you can use oh. it as a tunic. So we've got it, you know, that's a winter weight wool blend with a bonding on the back. So that's you know my kind of body shape. You know, I like a bit of a structured fabric over the bottom, um, but that has come up really beautifully in that. But if we whip that off for a second, that's it in a digital printed silk, mm. which you know that little top. Could go over a pair of jeans, could go over a pair of palazzo pants, but look nice over a bias cut skirt or a denim skirt. So if you want to use these more upmarket luxe fabrics um, 
and you you know they're not going to fit into your everyday life you think but they do mm. you know? yeah. and lux this was a etro mm. this was an etro fabric which you know unless you're wanting to drop a few thousand dollars for a jacket you normally i mean most people are not going to pay that kind of money for a garment um we get these kind of designer pieces in and you can make yeah beautiful make your own you know even if you're using a dressmaker you're getting a designer piece at a fraction of the fraction of the cost mm. so and you know we have a fabulous store in melbourne called christine's um i use that as a, a inspiration for me because mm. she does beautiful pr printed things um that you don't see anywhere else mm. no. and kim girls kim gets a lot of um end of role sort of stuff from a lot of top end designers so you girls would all know tony matachevsky oh let me show you oh hang on i'll go and get the fabrics so she's got these amazing fabrics in from tony matachevsky one is this one that i made into this coat it's a what is it it's a scuba it's, it's a, scuba. a reversible scuba so it's got it's one of those it's a double knit so, basically so i made it into this coat yeah. Um, and that's the reverse of it. But this fabric cost how much to manufacture? It was it's Italian and it was two hundred dollars Australian to manufacture the a, fabric. A meter. Yeah. A meter. And, but you know, they'll get to the end of their run, they don't want to make any more garments out of the same thing and then I swoop in and take out. And what so what I did like. what what did I I think I was selling it for forty dollars. Forty dollars a meter. So you know, there's a significant difference. And look at this piece. I mean, Suzanne's book down to a there's an accessories and trim place in Melbourne called Jimmy Buttons, and he keeps the most amazing trims. But again, it's Suzanne's eye for for when she's flicking through Instagram, you know, looking at the details of garments to see how she can incorporate that into her design and put the the chain through the back there now you just wouldn't see that you wouldn't see that in a shop i don't think I've, ne I've never seen anything like that in any of my shopping trips that's for sure quite amazing but a basic chanel jacket at the base of it an amazing piece because of the fabric this is the dress and that's a pattern fantastic dress and this is a, another tony matachevsky fabric but I haven't cut yet. So which he know. made gowns out of. He made ball gowns he out made of. Yeah, ball gowns. Yep. Which are it's oh. a organza with a, a devore over the top of it. So you've got sheer sections and solid yeah. sections. But again, it's not a fabric that, you know, you're not going to be, it's not an everyday type fabric. But once Suzanne makes this into a pinafore and puts a t shirt underneath it, yep. they, it's. And leggings, you know, I'll just wear it and I'll leave it sheer. I'm not going to line it, I'm going to leave it sheer. And just wear it with leggings and things underneath, so it'll be all flowy and all the rest of it. Um, and then this one I couldn't resist either. So you can see Tony, this Tony Medicevsky fabrics I went a bit nuts for. <laughs> uh, this is going to be another tunic. Oh. A... So this is an organza that's got a wool overlay. Again, these are all Italian made in their mills. He's got a mill that makes just for him. So Although we'll see how the world goes after we get back to normal. Can you see that? How beautiful is that? And again, it's sheer, but it's got a wool overlay in it. It's just totally divine. So I'm going to make that into another big long tunic. Well, you girls would really be able to get your designing chops out on some fabric. And I think mm. it's a really um, interesting way to for self-expression. Mm. You know, that's what I say my wardrobe as. I'm not a writer. I'm not a an orator, as you can all tell by this presentation. Um, <laughs> my clothes are my, you know, they're my self-expression. And, and people, you know, we talk about sustainability now and we talk about not being wasteful. Like I've had pieces, and you girls are probably the same, I've had pieces that I've made in my wardrobe for 30 years, may not fit me anymore. <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm like Oprah Winfrey, I have about three sections of sizes in the wardrobe, depending on what's happening. Um, but, you know, I, I can't, because I've put time into the garment, I, I want to keep them. I want to keep everything. And one day when I, you know, have a bit more time, I'll, I've kept things specifically to remake them into, into different garments. You've got a fabul fabulous shop in George Street in Paddington called Jeeva. Do you girls know Jeeva? Actually, amazing place to take your clients because they do use fabrics that are quite similar to mine. Um, 
and she does really great styles. But many years ago, she used to make velvet wrap dresses. So you've got, I've got all these velvet long wrap dresses that I wouldn't wear anymore, but I'm going to remake them into jackets or skirts or something. So I've always got that, the remake in the back of my mind with garments as well, if I love the fabric. I was discussing this at work the other day, you know, what, where's your place in the universe as a fabric supplier? You know, I have that, I have a bit of that kind of stock to, to appeal to my younger clients, but they don't want to wear silk prints. And we do. Like, I think, you know, we were just saying, once all this is finished, that that's the direction we're going to go into more is more designer things, more printed silks, things that aren't around anymore rather than everyone's got their place in the universe just like different stores and, and designers have you know you you stick to what your clients love I guess you girls all do that with people's particular style you know the shops that they're going to like to go to it's like H&M they do a capsule wardrobe every eight weeks for their for their store every eight weeks they have a different a new you know that's why they're so hard why people have gone de down the road of manufacturing more often but cheaply because they 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 don't want their garments to last they want them to look shabby after a few wears so then you go I need something else now because I can't use that as my good white work shirt because it hasn't washed well but that's you know it's almost like a cycle they want you back in the store spending on that cyclic basis yeah. And, yeah. and to do that they that's my theory that the garments are made not to last on purpose so they do have that repeat client places like target and see all their jeans for twenty dollars a pair and think to myself those jeans have not paid their way in the universe no, to be sold no. for twenty dollars mm -hmm. not the cotton that's gone into manufacturing the denim uh, the worker that's been paid a pittance to manufacture the garment um you know i like to to think that i know i'm a retailer you know i, I I'm not, I'm encouraging people to buy from me to sustain my business, but I believe it, the product that you get at the end of the process of dressmaking is something that will have longevity, will not be in a, won't be in a dump, won't be in landfill. <laughs> yes, I am very fussy. And I, and I like to su support small businesses like mine. Um, a lot of the things in my wardrobe will be Melbourne-based designers manufactured in Australia. You know, I'm not into plastic fabric. I like natural fibre, um, which I think once you go through the warm years, I'm in the warm years now, um, I don't want to wear a piece of plastic. Rambling. Um, the other thing I was going to say, girls, is, is too, what you can do is start to, as you get more confident and you've got a great tailor or dressmaker, what you can do is incorporate little bits mm. of your client's style personality into a garment so you can have as kim said that coat pattern was the is the plainest coat pattern in the world it's just that i tricked it all up with all the bits to make it more me but um, even this one when i made this one because i love the back of the fabric so that's just the reverse of the fabric i left the sleeves half open so that then I can pull this up, I can, and this has got a memory, this fabric, so I can roll it all up and scrunch it up and layer it with something else underneath, as you know, that's one of my favourite things to do. Um, so I can change things around. I'm, I'm not beholden to someone else's design. Yeah. And, and like we were saying too, I was thinking, when, when you said before, Lisa Curry Kenny, um, and Brenda probably doesn't know who she is, but she's a swimmer from she used to swim for Australia so she's got that swimmer's physique and when she wears those little pretty floral flimsy things it's not good but she could still if that's her style personality that feminine style she could still incorporate that but she just needs fabrics that have got more structure mm -hmm. rather than the very flimsy fabrics. Oh, Evelyn I've got a question or oh, sorry Kim. <laughs> Yeah. But I often find that a lot of the classic styles are very structured and a bit stiff. And I personally love natural fibres and softness and movement. And I particularly love that half shirt that you had because it was very classic but also very feminine. It looked like it was a light organza or something. I'm not really sure the fabric. Yeah, but it, is there any yeah. tips, Suzanne, uh, for a tip for, um, you know, um, fabrics that you think would serve that sort of classic almost like a structured look, but have a bit more movement and, um, and 
blowing this, I guess you would say. Um, um, I suppose I'm trying to say, what, what are the fibres? Is it always natural fibres that you um, suggest for that sort of classic look but give you that movement and softness too? So many of the classic fibres like wool, gabardines and flat and you know, with a twill or a flat weave, often have spandex in them now. You know, even a minimal mm. amount, the two or three percent of spandex gives you drapability and that movement as well. You know, none of us want to be stitched up. We all, you know, secret tracksuit pants, I call <laughs> things like that. You know, you, it feels like you're wearing tracksuit pants, but you're wearing tailored clothes. Um, so look for, yeah. for fibres yeah. with that small element of stretch in them. So they're a stretch woven rather than a stretch knit fabric. Like a t so which would be t-shirt okay. type fabric so it's still got the structure that you're looking for but it yes, also yes. has mm. the, the drape factor as well and like you, you you can tell you know tactile have a feel of it you give things a scrunch play with the, the bigger piece of fabric on your body drape thing I mean, shops don't mind if you go in and drape fabric all over yourself mm. um you know drape it on your body into the shape that you want the garment to be it'll tell you if it's going to work, it'll sit stiff on your body and you'll know that that's not what you're chasing. Mm. And if you're buying online, often a lot of places now will send you a swatch so you can have a feel of what something, everybody's got a, Everybody's got swatch services now. So you can feel what the fabric's going to feel like, or work like before you purchase it, which I think is important. Um, unless you know a business really well and the type of stock they keep, I would suggest that as a, a process is getting a bit of a sample um, bunch of fabrics first so you can have a feel of the quality. And um, To let you know, we've got Sue Donnelly jumping on next week um, and she's going to talk about water robe wellness using fashion feng shui. But because she's in the UK, we're for the first time, a different time zone. So we'll be on at seven o'clock next Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So Kim, thank you so much for your time, for your for sharing your knowledge this morning. And, and I, I picked up some pearls of wisdom there today. <laughs> so everybody, thank you for being on the call. I look forward to seeing you all next week um, and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>